Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be introducing you to the mod Expand World Prefabs. Expand World Prefabs is a fantastic server-side mod that allows you to change Valheim. The craziest thing about this mod is that you can put it on the server so you can alter the Valheim world and all of the people connecting have to deal with those alterations without downloading any files. All of this is possible because of Iron Gate, whose game you hopefully already purchased, and modders like Yere that allow us to do all sorts of incredible stuff without really knowing what we're doing. You can just go to the description of this video and find his Buy Me A Computer link here. Any kind of support is really useful, because the more we support these kind of individuals, then the more access to these incredible tools that we get. You can practice with this mod whether you have your own server or you are just single player, because you can use the mod single player to do the same things. The difference is that it's just not as interesting unless you have other people who join and you see their minds get blown because you're making their vanilla Valheim do something they've never seen before. It really is magical. Either way, you're going to be working with these two files a lot. So let's make sure you understand what they are, what they're for, and why the fact that they're YAML files is so important. As I mentioned earlier, I could make a change, and then live, it would stop the thing from happening. For example, right now, when I sheathe or unsheathe this dagger, we see this visual effect show up. But now, I can just comment out this one section here, and then save, and now, without even logging out of the server, you can see that that animation is gone. I can unequip and equip the dagger, and it's just normal. And this is what makes Expand World Prefab so powerful. You can use this mod to turn a Valheim server into an entirely different game. You could make a platformer, you could make different dungeons, you could make a Valheim survival game, you could make something totally different with a storyline that has nothing to do with original Valheim. You could even turn Valheim into a movie maker. Because really what's going on in these files is it allows you to tie existing assets to other assets. So as long as you only use what already exists in the game, you can make all sorts of incredible things happen. As a quick example, before I get into it, here's some of the things you could do that are totally game-changing. But now, that's enough yakety yak. Let's do an illustration. This here is a silver dagger. Nothing special about the silver dagger itself, but let's see what happens to this pack of undead. As you can see, the Silver Dagger is <laughs> a lot stronger than what we're used to. And this isn't a special Silver Dagger. It's just a regular Silver Knife that's level 4, and the same thing will happen to anybody on the server who damages an undead with Silver Weaponry. It creates an extra damage effect and then summons a Lightning Bolt, and here we can see that Silver Weapon buff. It's this portion here, and then down to there. And that's pretty much it. A lot of these scripts are really simple, and some of the best ones are the ones where you identify just one little tiny change that you can make that then has a lot of game-changing mechanical alterations as a result. Here's another example of something mechanical that you can do to change how the game actually feels. You see, this server is set to the very hard setting, and in practice, that meant that all of the players just used ranged and magic. So here's a demo of a rework to melee that makes it easier to stay alive. So now, anytime anybody blocks on the server, as long as you survive that first hit, you get a bubble. And then a lightning sort of takes the bubble away, but it's not gone, watch this. See that? I still have a bubble. I have a hundred health bubble. And this may seem extreme, but trust me, on very hard difficulty, all this means is that you won't get killed in two shots, you'll get killed in three. And what's so cool about this system is that it only triggers when an enemy is nearby you. And I'm not saying that you need to introduce this melee rework. I'm just showing you what's possible with Expand World Prefabs. 
keeping in mind that everybody on the server experiences this. That means that if there's some kind of idea you wanted to try or test out, then this is your prime opportunity to do so. You can set it up and have a couple players try it and see what happens. And that's such a fantastic way to learn. And now that I've demoed a couple of the things that EWP can allow you to do, knowing that this is just the tip of the iceberg, now that you've seen some demonstrations of what's possible, let's teach you how to actually teach yourself how to use this stuff. You can go to the Expand World Prefabs page or look in the description of this video, and then you're gonna look for this documentation link to Expand World Prefabs. This is worth a thorough read, but this alone isn't going to be enough to get you into it. You really have to sort of target a simple thing that you want to change in the game that you have some kind of attachment to. You know, when you've played Valheim, you felt that ah, this one thing is a bother, so I want to try it out. And Focus on how can you do that simple thing. That way you can look over the documentation with your intention in mind. That being said, here are some mechanisms that I found to be quite useful. Things that I use over and over again. The simplest format to use something that you can learn just by watching this video and then actually start doing yourself is adding one prefab to another when it first shows up. And just to be clear, a prefab just means anything you can see. As an example, here's the prefax for the wagon from the Dverger place getting destroyed. That's it. It's just a visual effect. It's nothing else. No damage or anything. Sometimes prefabs have damaging components and that sort of thing, but we won't get into that. For now, you can just assume everything's uh, either an audio prefab or a visual prefab which triggers something. So by finding the prefab that you want to add something to, you can easily customize certain things. As an example, let's focus on this Biobomb Terrain Deepener, which is one of my personal favorites. You take the Biobomb Explosion, which is what happens when you throw this Biobomb normally, and then we add a bunch of extra stuff to it. So what you need to do is pay attention to this part right here, because this is going to be quite common. You have to have this dash like that, right? Let's say that you do that. Oh, that's going to break everything. It's got to be right there. And let's say that you forget this. Oh, that's a problem as well. You need to make sure that it's in the right format, okay? And that format for the most simple of stuff is going to be dash prefab colon, then the prefab that you want to do something to. And for the simple things that make something, you just add this part, type, create, instead of destroy or something else, and then spawns, and following that is a list of all of the things that you want it to spawn. So let's throw another one of these bio bombs and see exactly what happens. We're gonna throw it right in the water here, and you can see there's an initial explosion, there's a visual effects, there's another explosion, and then another explosion. So obviously this is more than just a normal bio ball. But how is that all happening at different times? How do we customize the times? Well, the time is a delay, and it's here. So you have the prefab you want to spawn, then you have the coordinates for how far away you want it to be from the trigger, and then you have the other vector, don't worry about that. And then we have some data. This is just a placeholder data that you would need in your data file, which I'll get to in a little bit. But for now, let's just look at this illustratively. This is the guts of it. If you understand this, then you'll get the basics of how this works, okay? And then if you want a delay, you just put a comma after the data area and then a number. And this is gonna be the delay in seconds. This would delay this prefab for four seconds, whereas I want it to be immediate. It happens straight away. Now, this may make it look complicated, but you don't actually need all this extra stuff. As you can see, this sound effects here just plays like that. I don't change any of the coordinates. You only need to add the extra stuff if you're changing what happens here, which would mean you want to add damage to it, or you want to alter if it hurts players or enemies or props. <laughs> and this is the basic format. <laughs> you can see that some bushes showed up back there. That's EWP in action. 
In this world, whenever you burn something with fire, it then creates growth later on afterwards. And that's why those bushes showed up, because there was actually fire, even though it was under the water. Now, I haven't been showing you the whole picture, because I just showed you the prefab file, which is most of it. But there's also a data file, which you need to get used to. This is the expand data YAML file that's also in the same folder created when you run expand world prefabs for the first time. Luckily, the expand data file is easier to understand because it's pretty much just a place for you to store references that you use in the prefab file. Think of expand data as the database of sort of changes, whereas expand prefabs is more like the list of rules that references that database. All of these things here are data entries, so when it sees this AOE hurt all in this exact place after these commas with all this stuff, it looks in this file to find this dash name and then AOE hurt all, and then once it finds this, it uses this information. So you can see how the placeholder right under it is called hurt none. And here, the hit props is zero, and the hit characters is zero. So you'll see the visual of this effect, but the damaging parts won't hurt the player. Whereas for this effect, everything happens. You see the visual and you see the damage. That's why it's called AoE Hurt All. So now you know the gist of it. Expand World Prefabs puts these text files on your server or on your local client if that's what you're doing. The main text file is Expand Prefabs and then the supporting text file is Expand Data. Modifying the text and adding text to these files allows you to cause real-time changes on your Valheim server. The easiest way to think is that it makes the server react to stuff that the players do normally. So the player still has to get the bio bomb normally and throw it to spawn the explosion, but then once they do it, the server takes over. It sees that first explosion and then it reacts to it by adding more stuff on different delays. And this just gives uh, an explosive nature to the game that isn't there presently. But the changes can be a lot more subtle. You could, for example, entirely remove the night spawning mechanism. You could remove the boss progression and make an alternative boss progression. And here, I can actually show you. Here we are on the soon to be launched Path of Magic server. You can see that this is the Elder Spawner, and it works just like a normal Elder Spawner. You throw the stuff in and the Elder comes out. However, there's another option over here. There's this special invincible chest that says surround a pile of fangs with the bones of men. And there's three slots for it. And if we take one pile of bone fragments, one pile of wolf teeth, and then one additional pile of bone fragments, and then give it a couple seconds. Then next time the character walks up to the chest, a lightning bolt will strike, and then they will get the Swamp Key, the progression reward from the Elder. This gives players a way that they can solo progress without screwing up the whole server's progression. But this is just one example. As I mentioned, there's many different ways that you can customize the Valheim experience on your server. And now that you've made it to the end of the video, I'll give you the really juicy stuff. The download pages for all of Yeri's mods have a link to the Valheim World Editing Discord. In this Discord, you can find configs where people share the things that they've been working on. But if you go into this group, you'll find this fields and list area here. And in that list is the text names for every spawnable visual, sound, or regular effect in the game. I encourage you to download all of these values and then put them in one place, because then you can just look at this database, and then anytime you're curious about something, let's say you want to take this staff shield breaking visual effect, we can just go into regular Valheim and type spawn in the console, and then boom, 
we see the animation. This allows you to easily figure out exactly what animation is perfect for what you need. And, uh, sorry, I said animation, but I shouldn't use that word because that specifically means something else in this case. I'm just talking about the visual effects that I just spawned. Another effect I really like to use is the lightning effect because it's so strong, sudden, and powerful. It really makes it quite obvious if something's going on. But you'll find that just browsing this list alone is usually enough to give you some inspiration of something you want to react to. And I find that this is sort of the easiest way to get your feet wet where you're actually practicing with the scripting yourself. Because you can do whole games, you could do crazy things with these scripts, and they can get really complicated. So for now, just as your learning adventure unfolds, I encourage you to find something simple that you can adjust. Find one prefab that you want to add one other thing to. And the main thing you need is to have one of these lists. Otherwise, you'll be limited to doing it this way, typing FX and hoping you can tab through something that ends up being what you actually like, and good luck with that. It's much better to actually just get the list and look at it that way. Now, there's one more nugget I want to give you that's going to make it a lot easier for you to learn and figure this out yourself. And it involves using another ERA mod, World Edit Commands. This is something that if you're doing solo, you just need to download on your client. But if you're using a server, you need to put this on the server and also on your client. This mod makes learning much, much easier because it allows you to look at the actual values of things. Let me show you. Let's take this chest here as an example. Imagine I'm confused and I don't really know what values to work with or the format to put them in. Well, I can just spawn something that I do know about. For example, let's place a black metal chest here. Now we can see that we have a big empty chest. Uh, let's say I want to figure out what's the item values of the, the swamp key in a chest. All I need to do is have world edit commands installed, both on the server and the local client. And then I need to point the cursor at the object I want to pull the data from, open up the console, and type data save equals, let's call it video black metal chest. This is going to save the values of this object to a special file. If you go into the Bepinex config and then data folder for the local client that you're playing on, you'll find this lone data file here. And if you open it up and then scroll to the bottom, Look at that, we have the data fields for a video black metal chest. Interesting, okay, so now we know these are some of the field that we can mess with. We can see that this is the string for the swamp key. It must be because this is the only item that's in there, right? But it also shows you the actual text showing the items then in theory, I should just be able to get rid of all this, right? Let's change this name to something like JP Valheim Chest, okay? And now we're gonna save it. Now what we can do is use a different command called spawn object. This command allows us to spawn objects and then apply custom data fields to those objects. So we're going to spawn a chest that is black metal, piece chest black metal, and then we're going to use data equals, and then we can tab through all of the different data values in the file. If you just start, then it's only going to be the ones that you've saved. I'm going to look for the JP Valheim chest. Now we're going to spawn this chest. Oh, unfortunately I messed it up, so let's change it real quick. I'll just get rid of that space and then save it. And now we can get rid of this space and then boom, the black metal chest shows up. And what's crazier, look in it, we have a swamp key and it's another swamp key. So this is how you identify what the fields are and then you sort of put them into other things. Using world edit commands is a really important part of this process 
because it's how you customize the data. You don't have to use world edit commands, but if you're trying to learn about expand world prefabs, then using world edit commands makes learning it easier. So I strongly encourage you to do so. If you want to support my work and get your own dedicated Valheim server, then consider using my link jpvalheim at zap hosting. I also have some tutorials showing you all about troubleshooting and setting it up and the different things that you can do with your own Valheim server compared to the regular Valheim single player experience. Alternatively, if you want to see more Valheim content, then just like this video or any other video about Valheim and YouTube will dish out the content.